Welcome to episode four of the Secret to Immortality podcast, where we discuss how to be joyous, happy, free, and physically immortal in this life. I'm John F. Harrigan, author, Qigong master, and founder of the website immortalnow.com. In this episode, we'll discuss immortality coaching, the power of working with a mentor farther upon the immortality path. We'll be referring throughout this podcast episode to our blog article titled Immortality Coaching. You can find that article at the website immortalnow.com at our blog and go to that blog page and in the right column there's a search box and just type in Immortality Coaching. It'll take you to the blog article. Reading right from that blog article, we state that we recommend immortality coaching, working with an expert farther upon the path. I personally have found mentorship and coaching to be highly effective, adding power, support, and strength I would not have had without it. For me, immortality coaching has been essential to my development. All my life, from childhood on, I've been close to mentors who have helped with my immortality path. You too can have this advantage, the advantage of working with us in mentorship and coaching, and we'll tell you how to do that later on in the podcast. Immortality coaching is no different than any other type of coaching for self-improvement, like academic coaching, professional coaching, how to be better at your job, how to be more successful, or coaching in sports. But it's a little more involved and a little more personal. Immortality coaching involves mentorship, somebody working closely with you, with who you are, more customized to your inner self, getting to who you are so you can have really what you want most of all in life. And eventually, physical immortality, or quickly. A mentor or coach helps us by example, instruction, and inspiration. Expertise, character, goodness, does transfer by proximity, being close to a more experienced experienced person, like osmosis. There can be a type of automatic transfer by association. Osmosis meaning transfer from greater to lesser concentration, finding equilibrium. Um, Another definition, probably more appropriate to the osmosis I'm talking about here with you is, quote, gradual or unconscious assimilation of knowledge. Just as a child can benefit by the presence of good parents, we can benefit today as adults by relationship with an effective coach. Both encourage who both encourages and enables our development. So before we go on, and before I start to share with you my essential mentors in my life to this point, I want to talk a little bit more about mentoring and coaching. Our parents, for better or worse, are the first mentors or coaches we have. And some of that coaching is helpful and some of it we really kind of have to unlearn and undo. And that's what we'll do in immortality coaching. My background is in psychology, a master's in family relations. I worked as a counselor and social worker with children and families. So that's not what I do now. I do coaching, immortality coaching. I do these podcasts. I write articles on our website, on our blog at immortalnow.com. I teach the secret to immortality. So before I talk about my first mentors, let's go into a little more depth and understanding about how other people influence us. Our parents were the first to really affect us, to really wire us up neurologically. Also, without getting into science, I'm not going to ever do that. It puts people to sleep and it confuses them. But our genetics and epigenetics, how our parents were treated growing up, how our grandparents, great-grandparents, it all has a neurological effect in how our body and our brain and our nervous system develops. And my point is, it doesn't matter. We can undo all the harm 
that has transferred to us by previous generations, we can do undo all the harm of the present lifetime slowly or quickly through immortality coaching. Maybe not exactly everything if I'm working with you individually. And there are some problems where I think you would benefit um, by competent psychotherapy or counseling. I'll certainly recommend it because that's not what I'm doing. I'm taking you into who you are, into your depth, into your soul of immortality. And naturally, with me or with anyone else, as you tell your story, you naturally work through trauma. That's basically a, a therapeutic, the therapeutic approach of working through lifetime trauma is sharing it and talking about it until that charge of the trauma is diminished and no longer affecting us and no longer tying us up. So a mentor is really just a good uncle, a good aunt, in a way, reparenting ourselves. That's what I've done. Um, we all need to do it. We all have to do it. Parent ourselves with an immortal source, a perfect loving compassion. It may be our deep self if you're religious. It may be the God of your understanding. If you work in the 12 steps as I have for over 30 years, it may be what you call your higher power. So... Now we're going to go into my mentors. Who mentored me and how did that work out? My first mentor was my mother. In my youth, she practiced yoga earnestly, and that was a long time ago. Um, my mother was a student of time-honored yoga wisdom, um, the real authentic yoga um, from India, um, not quite the yoga classes you might find, though they're wonderful and they're helpful. You might find... Um, at a local health club, but my mother was really into the the wisdom, the philosophy of yoga, as well as the physical poses. And as important, or maybe more so, my mother was a lifelong student of something called A Course in Miracles, a profound, beautiful, and powerful approach to spirituality. I didn't do that specifically. My mentor mother told me. I started to read the book, and I was curious, and she said, um, to me, John, her son, that that wasn't really for me. And that wasn't really going to be the way that I was going to develop and progress. And I just felt and knew that she was right. It wasn't a blind trust. I felt and knew my mom was right. So I'd learn a bit from the Course in Miracles, but not entirely. If you're interested, Google the Course in Miracles and follow through on it. But I'm teaching you the secret to immortality here, which is a little different just in the the end product, so to speak. Maybe not different at all um, in principle. But my mother was a lifelong student of A Course in Miracles with study individually every day. She'd get up every day and she'd do her meditation. She'd do her prayers. She'd do physical exercises, um, a type of Qigong making sure her body was healthy and um, well. She lived to be 98. And then she would go study her Course in Miracles. And then she would do mental exercises like uh, math. She would just do math exercises in her head and crossword puzzles. Both my father did a similar thing every morning. My mother worked on the Course in Miracles individually and every day and once a group. Once a group, once a week, she would go to a group, a Course in Miracle group, where she had friends and mentors, and where she mentored herself, I'm sure. My mother read all the great books on world religions, spiritual development, and personal growth at the time. And she shared them with me, and we studied them together and read them together. But my mother more as a mentor. She was a bit older and more experienced than I was. We went to a wonderful Episcopal church that encouraged an open mind and personal exploration. Exploration. I had no limits intellectually in my spiritual growth. A good thing. And for me, as I sat in prayer with my mother every night, um, it was a powerful practice, beautiful, wonderful, where my mother would kneel down with me and we'd say prayers. But my mother would teach me really um, the power of visualization, positive thinking, and she would teach me to access, find my own higher power, my own God, which I decided was simply an infinitely loving being because that's what I was experiencing even as a young child. 
in our church library at this uh, really nice Episcopal church, um, open-minded, um, accepting. In that church library and our home, there was Unity Church literature. We would get the monthly Unity Church publication, small magazine. I would read it every month uh, from cover to cover, found it very inspirational and helpful. Unity has a progressive and accepting approach that looks at world religions and the link between science and religion. And if you're at my um, blog post article on my website, immortalnow.com, again, that blog article uh, that is associated with this podcast is Immortality Coaching. So go to, if you want, go to the Immortality Now and <laughs> go to immortalnow.com and go to the blog section and put in the title Immortality Coaching in the search box and you'll get to the article that I'm going to read from right now. Um, as I stated, Unity has a progressive and accepting approach that looks at world religions and the link between science and religion. I liked that a lot and still do. Unity's five guiding principles I'm going to read to you. This is not the secret to immortality. This is not a belief system of my own, but it's something I want to share with you. This, these ideas mentored me, and they can, they can help you too, perhaps. Unity's five guiding principles. One, God is the source and creator of all. And for the secret of immortality, it's not a religion, it's not a belief system. So we might not use the word God always, though I do, and it's fine for me. Maybe higher power or a deeper eternal resource within you. So God, that higher power, is the source and creator of all. And we teach in the immortality that your soul is creating who you are in this world that you live in. So God, we, our soul, our perfect core is the source and creator of all. So mind you, I'm amending and changing Unity's guiding five principles a bit to fit with the secret of immortality. One, God, you, your immortal core, who we are at our immortal core, is the source and creator of all. There is no other enduring power. There is no other enduring power. And to translate this into the secret to immortality, I would say it's not that there is, are any competing powers. It's just what do you do with your power? What do we do with our soul? What do we do with our creative ability? There is no other enduring power. Well, um, there can't be. There's only one me. There's only one you. And uh, that's what that means to me. God is good. Um, I would say our core, our soul is perfect, compassionate love. God is good, present, and everywhere. God is good, present, and everywhere. And that power of goodness is everywhere and present for us. Two, re reading, I'm changing, of course, Unity's five principles around for the secret to immortality because that's what I'm teaching you and a lot of time has passed since I first read these. Two, quote from Unity's five principles, quote, we are spiritual beings created in God's image. The spirit of God lives within each person. Therefore, all people are inherently good. Now, um, I'm going to change this a little and don't, not to be critical but um, this is a little too dogmatic and a, a little too belief-oriented. Like, yeah, I believe that and I'll be saved. And it's like, mm, well, um, maybe that's a start to have a good belief system. But there's, there's a lot of work to do, uh, folks. And that's what the secret to immortality is. There's work to going inside who we are. We're spiritual beings, it says. And I would just say what that means is we are we are good inside. When you find that gold in you, which we teach you to do through the secret of immortality, when you find that gold inside yourself, it's a darn good feeling. And you start to see that gold, that perfect beauty, that love and compassion everywhere. Um, Unity says, quote, we're created in God's image. And I would say that we're created in a perfect manner deep inside us, but that gets flawed and obstructed over time, especially by injury and trauma. In The Secret to Immortality, we teach you ways to undo that trauma, undo that flaw, so you can find your perfect whole and golden self. Quote from Unity, the Spirit of God lives within each person. 
Um, I would amend that and say it's not like something's living in you that isn't you. It's just at your core is something very similar, if not exactly the same of God, and that is you living as you inside you and outside you, if you choose to have that. Quote from Unity, therefore all people are inherently good, end quote. It kind of sounds like dogma or belief. They're, you know, I believe all people are inherently good, therefore blah, blah, blah. Um, once you find your core, your golden self, the perfect love and eternal compassion within you, you will notice without even without any effort that that same beautiful core is within all people, no matter how nasty they may act, behave, and feel. And that's what a mother sees in her child, a good mother sees in her child. You know, I'm not to pick on uh, people in, in penitentiaries, but you know, even even people that are are pretty difficult folks um, in prisons for terrible crimes. Their mother saw their golden soul. And to mama, that's still their beautiful baby, though that baby may not have acted out in the world as an adult in a very good way. But, quote, all people are inherently good from unity. I would just say that as we work on ourselves with the secret of immortality, we find that that eternal goodness that we express in ourselves, in our bodies, in our minds, and in the world. And as we do that, we see the beauty and goodness in everybody else. Number three, from the five principles of unity, quote, we create our life experiences through our way of thinking. I would certainly agree with that. I would say not only our way of thinking, but our way of speaking and our way of acting, all of its action. Thinking is an action. It's an action we can see in our brain. Uh, neurologists, um, brain scientists can see it happening. It's all action. So the actions that we choose in the, in the secret to immortality, the actions that we choose in a minute-to-minute, conscious and unconscious manner, we suggest to you that you look at them. <laughs> and we suggest that those actions, thinking, speaking, and behaving, are creating not only ourselves and our lives and our life experiences, but the matter that we live in, the physical world, the physical matter, and how it responds to us. How we are thinking and acting gives instructions, we suggest, to the physical world of how to behave. We're really programming this reality in how to act, this physical reality, our bodies, the physicality, the world around us, the weather, the planet. We're programming it like a computer programmer, like a code writer writes code. We're programming this creation by what we think, what we say, and how we act. Number four of Unity's five principles. You might say, well, why are you quoting these five principles if you're changing them around? I'm really not. I'm elaborating on these principles and showing you how these principles evolved into what I'm teaching today. Three was we create our life experiences through our way of thinking. Four from Unity, quote, there is power in affirmative prayer. It can increase a person's connection to God, or I would add to your core self, to your beautiful soul. And it's not just prayer. Anything that you do that validates who you are, treating somebody else kindly, speaking kindly, um, standing up for good principles, anything we do that validates that perfect love and gold, that higher power, God, whatever your higher power is, that the greater you within you, anything we do that, do that affirms goodness in who we are has a positive result in bringing that immortal nature to life. And five from unity is, quote, knowledge of spiritual principles is not enough. People must live them through their actions, end quote. And yes, I would say, you know, book learning and and knowledge of things and thinking, oh, I know that. No, it's not enough. We have to go to deeper, deeper in levels. We have to go to deeper and deeper levels of self-knowledge beyond ideas, beyond thinking, to find and activate our core. This is the end of our podcast today. Join us in our next podcast where we talk more about immortality coaching and I share three more of very influential mentors, my father and my first real immortality coach, an American master woman working on her own immortality process called Translation, 
and my final immortality coach and mentor, a Qigong grandmaster and traditional Chinese physician from Beijing, China. If you've liked what you've heard and want more, you may want to join Immortality Lab on our website, immortalnow.com. At Immortality Lab, we take you closer to the secrets to immortality and tell you exactly what to do step-by-step step for a life of happiness, joy, and physical immortality on Earth. With an Immortality Lab membership, you get two exclusive videos every week. A Qigong for Lasting Life video that is nowhere else to be found, only in Immortality Lab, in an Immortality Talk, just for you and just an Immortality Lab. You'll also get daily inspirational quotes to your email, special surprises and opportunities for beta copies of new courses, videos, and books. We wish you the best, bless you and keep you. We are immortal now.